It is time to welcome in former Padres all-star closer Heath Bell, who I can't wait to hear from Heath what he thought about Joe Musgrove's no-hitter. Heath Bell, what's happening? Hey, how you guys doing? Um, you know, Musgrove's no-hitter was – it was um, – the I, I be honest, the last two innings was unbelievable um because that's all the time that's the only the only innings i got to see because my son had a baseball game and then the game was over and i looked at my phone and my phone was kind of blown up that there's a possible no hitter and so i just turned it right on to my phone and stood in the stands even though um my son's team <laughs> got on the bus and started heading back because it was a road game different high school and the other high school team was working on their field and we my wife and I and my kids, my other kids were just in the stands watching the game. So um, it was really exciting. It was really awesome. Uh, it goes back to remembering when Chris Young almost did it a few years ago. But um, just to, you know, not check that off the list of uh, the Padres have never done. So, um, you know, my, this might be one of the, you know, uh, checkoffs, but also the World Series might be another one. So you never know. All right. It was, it was pretty awesome. The ultimate optimist, Heath Bell, the former Padre All-Star closer is with us. Um, that's interesting that you were sitting there watching it. You didn't choose to get in your car and drive home and watch it in the car. You actually just stayed there and watched. I know many people, Heath, were locked in like you were. And just as you're talking about being with your family, I had the same experience. Like I was out on a, high or a flag football field and my son was texting me from Orange County. My daughter's at home watching. Uh, people are standing around my phone watching it at the field. It was, a, it was a family affair, and it was a Padre fan affair. I know this sounds like ridiculously hokey, but when you've heard for 8,000-plus games in 50-plus years, never been a no-hitter, and you get that close, it, it just becomes a big deal. Yeah, it really was. I mean, I even said – I go to my wife. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, there's a, um, you know, possible no, no, you know, I didn't want to say the actual no hitter. And she was like, don't say that, you know? And then all of a sudden my want, my son's walking off and looking at us and I go, just check the Padre game. You know, I yelled at him as he gets on the bus to ride, um, ride back to the hook to um, his high school. So he has his phone. So he watched it on the, his bus going back to his high school. So it was, um, it was pretty cool. We, we tried not to jinx it like probably every Padre <laughs> fan out there. And, um, it was, it was just pretty exciting. It was pretty, um, it was, it was just exciting. I don't know. Words can't glad, really decide, describe. I'm glad you bring up that, that jinx because I thought it was super interesting that Bally sports leaned right into it and they put the lower third graphic on the right next to the score, 7.2 innings, Musgrove, no hits allowed. And they had it there the rest of the game. <laughs> I was like, that is a step because Mud and Mud and um and Don uh, mm -hmm. did not say the word no hitter. They were saying like you, they were kind of they were talking around the word no hit. Yep. But the scoreboard had the, the graphic on the whole time. <laughs> it's just I think some baseball people just don't under, don't get it and don't realize um, you know, when you haven't you haven't achieved it, but when everything is the stars are aligned and everything is working and everybody's in the right spot. It's just, it's destined for it to happen. But um, there's just that one, one time, one pitch that could mess the whole thing up. So um, it, I'll just give you an example. Like my son's high school baseball team, they had a no hitter going through the fifth inning and the third batter of the fifth inning reached out and hit a ball right over the first baseman's head. It was an ugly swing, just reached out on a curveball, booped it over the first baseman's head, and the team only got one hit, and that was it. But it was just like anything can happen. You know, a ball just hits a rock, shoots the other way. You know, somebody takes their foot off the bag. You, you never know. Ball gets hit in the lights or something. I, I don't know it. So um, it's it's just awesome to see. The Padres don't finally have a no-hitter. And um, it, was, it was fun to watch. I mean, I got to watch Saturday's game on the television. And then I went to Sunday's game. So, um, actually in, in Texas stadium. So our, um, globe life, global life stadium, I think it is. Um, it was really nice to be back to baseball. I mean, the stadium was probably about 80% full just because, I mean, there was a lot of Padre fans there. And I think either a lot of the Padre fans left because it was Sunday and got to go back to work on Monday and the Texas Rangers aren't doing so well 
because there was Ranger fans there, but you know, they weren't too happy. They're getting their butts kicked and swept by the Padres. So, um, but it was really nice. Um, you know, you saw people with masks, but people with no masks. So it was, it was just really nice to be back to a game instead of watching a game like this and mm. covered up and acting <laughs> like a ninja. So, uh, he thought it was just that, nice. We could, we could cheer. We could do everything. It was fun. He thought, thought what was equally as impressive to me, and that maybe you can chime in on this as well, that the next day there was no no-hitter hangover. They went out and took care of business because they knew they were the better team. And to me, that's a really good mark of a team focused on a goal. What, what do you think about that? Um, I think that's huge. I mean, I think the guys – are literally one day at a time, one pitch at a time. They're trying to win one every inning. They're trying to win every inning, not just the game. They're trying to win all nine innings. So um, just like Sunday's game, um, we were basically going to win the game on a one hit. You know, we um, um, I forget who it is, hit a solo home run before Manny, Manny. hit a solo home oh. No, Manny Grisham. hit the second Grisham one. Hit the first Grisham hit the – and the pitcher, their pitcher was dealing. And we weren't hitting well. And then all of a sudden we just hit a solo home run and you could see that like our pitchers were doing really good. Stammen came in after um, our starter no. hurt his forearm or something. Yeah. I don't know exactly what he hurt, but um, the bullpen did really well. And you could just see like the momentum was kind of on Texas, but the Padres just kept grinding and kept grinding and kept grinding and, you know, they were winning towards the end and they got out of some big jams at the end. And then uh, Manny finally hit a home run that kind of solidified, hey, we're going to win this game. And um, even though it was 2 nothing, um, you could just see it was the boys were out there just grinding the whole time. They weren't just saying, hey, we we've won this series so we can ease up on Sunday. You know, we pitched a no hitter. It's you know, it's kind of our year. They were like, we're winning today. Yeah. We're winning well, Saturday. Have- we're winning Sunday. And, and you know what? We're going to keep winning. But Heath, listen, I think, and I know, Browner, it's a good question because, and it's a good point. I think th- the thing is, um, and I said this to the guys from game one, I'm scoreboard watching every day. I'm checking the standings literally every day. When my daughter says to me, why are you saying literally as literally? I said, I don't know. I don't have an answer, but I said it like that. I'm watching the standings, Heath, every day because as we're watching the Padres win series, sweep series, et cetera, um, we also had seen them lose a series to the Giants at home. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm looking at the Dodgers, who are also in Fuego, eight and two through their first 10. And I'm saying, this intensity, every game matters. You, you could have won the first two and said, we're good but they had to go out and win three. You got to keep pace. So I don't know what you think about that, but to me, for as a fan, this is the most intense early season I've ever cared about. <laughs> and I think the pedal is to the metal the entire year. What do you say? Yeah, I, I would say I'd agree with you. I think the, the guys got to go out there and grind every single day. And the fans, it's going to be exciting because – there's some to say, you know, we're, we're chasing the Dodgers, you know, the Dodgers are in first place. We're right there, right on their heels. But when you're in first place, everybody's trying coming after you. And we're, st- we're kind of, we're, tr- it's almost like we're running a race and we're, we got to catch up to the guy in front of us, even though the guy in front of us is right in front of us, he's still ahead of us. And we just got to keep pushing and keep pushing. We can't give up it. We can't give up anything. We can't just win a series. We got to sweep series this because, you know, if we take a, a water break or a, a little breath or something, they're going to all of a sudden be two games, three games, four games above us. And, um, you know, and the big, it's, it's going to be really big when we play the Dodgers, you know, it, they're can. always really big is when we play the well, Dodgers. You know, it's different this year too, when Dave Roberts adjusts his pitching rotation to line up his three studs to go Friday, Saturday, Sunday against the Padres. Well, his three top studs, just by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of studs out there. But that just shows you it, it shows you that other teams and Dave Roberts, World Series manager, it respects how good the Padres are and how good the Padres are this year and how they're built and how they play. They could have a, a lot of talent but not play well together. And the Padres are playing really well together. They're a team. Um, Tatis was hitting batting practice on Sunday when we got there early. 
to the field and he was hitting some home runs and it was really exciting to see that. Um, my wife was like, why is he not playing? I'm like, well, when you go on the DL, you got to stay there a couple, couple days. You can't just pick and choose. But um, it's just one of those things that people are starting to respect how good the Padres are from last year and to this year. Like I said, last year, last year doesn't, isn't really going to mean anything unless the Padres get to the playoffs this year. And mm -hmm. it's looking really good, even though, it's early, it's really still, early, right? It's really early. It's looking, I mean, they're ranked number two in the power rankings. And well, let me ask still you a quick question. Well, let me ask you a quick question. We're talking to Heath Bell, former Padre all-star closer. Heath in, in the beginning of COVID last year, left his Poway home and moved down to Texas so that his son could continue playing high school baseball where they were going to play in Texas um, when they weren't in San Diego. Now, of course, everybody knows that they're back to playing here in San Diego, but Heath has the family all still down in Texas. Okay. When the Padres come to town, non-COVID, a former Padre player, especially somebody as decorated as your career was, could easily, I suspect, call the, the, the organization, say, hey, I'm going to come to the game this weekend. Can you guys leave passes for me? My family, I want to come to the clubhouse, say hello to the guys, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in today's COVID world, do you just buy tickets and go to the game as a fan, or do you make a call, and even if you did, like, I'm sure that they wouldn't even let you near the players, I don't think, just because of the COVID well, just regulations. Out of just out of respect, everything going on, you know, I don't need to be near the players or whatnot. They're real focused right now, and just with all the um, rules and regulations going on. So right now, I just – I bought tickets because my um, son wanted to bring, like, four of his friends uh, from his high school team. So we drove two cars up there to um, uh, Fort Worth, Texas, and – he loves to sit in the outfield. He wants to catch home run balls. And the funny part was my little guy, my uh, little 11 year old that, you know, he likes baseball, but he could, you know, he's probably going to be an architect. He loves to draw. Mm -hmm. He's the one who got a ball from, a, from somebody. And my uh, son almost caught uh, Manny Manny's home run, but he was um, the Manny's home run went like three rows behind him. So it was, uh, it was almost it really exciting. It was exciting, but it was, uh, we just bought tickets and we went there as a fan and everybody always asked. And I, people saw me and recognized me in the stands. They're like, why are you in the outfield? I'm like, cause my kids like being in the outfield cause they want to catch home run balls. And I spent so many years basically in the bullpen in the outfield. So, um, I don't mind watching a game from here, <laughs> even though my wife really wanted to be near home plate. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> that's a good point. Like you're used to watching games in the outfield. Yeah. Yeah. So my wife was really upset. She was kind of bummed out. She's like, I want to be close. I want to be up there. You should, so, the kid, your kid's old enough. You put the kids in the outfield and put you and the wife behind home plate. Well, that's actually what we decide next time to uh, do. Um, I said, okay, next time we come out here, like when we go to um, the Houston game, the Padres come out here, I think Memorial weekend. I said, we'll get good seats and we'll stick the kids in the outfield. There you <laughs> go. There you go. Hey, Heath, I don't know if you saw this or not, but um, yesterday afternoon, a Padres um, like fan site or something started to post that the Padres were, and, and this um, artist, they were painting Musgrove on the wall at his high school, Grossmont High School. And so because this had never happened before, and because it happened with a kid who's completely local, and by the way, I don't know if you ever met, you ever meet Joe Musgrove? No, I haven't. So, you know, because as a kid, when he was in high school, he was around the Padres because he was always one of like the top kids, you know? So like they have pictures of him and Adrian standing at home plate together. <laughs> Adrian's handing him like his, you know, honor. Alex, could you put that back up on the screen for one second? I want Heath to take a look at this. So Heath, so this fan site apparently lets people know that this is being painted. And our man, Fat Tony, shout out to FT, he runs out there to the high school to see these artists who are painting this Heath, can you see this on your screen? Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. That's awesome. How, how rad is that dude? That's awesome. That's unbelievable. I mean, I really hope they, um, they don't get in trouble for writing on the wall, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Well, I guess, um, because fat Tony went down there and he spoke to the artists, I, you know, asked him a whole bunch of questions to ask to them. And what they said was that the Padres paid for it. And that somehow through, I guess, the principal, the school district, whatever, they immediately fast-tracked it and said, yes, Friday night he threw a no-hitter, and Sunday he's going to have a mural painted of him on the school's wall, which is super cool. But that's the part of the story, guys. Browner, Alex, that, that's the part of the story that I love the most. It's not that the Padres threw a no-hitter. No um, 
if you Darvish threw a no, no hitter, it'd be like, great. That's awesome. You know, but the fact that the kid is from San Diego, grew up a Padres fan, it was only his second start in a Padre uniform. You know, he's sort of the third guy too, right? I mean, they went out and got Darvish and Snell and those were the exciting pickups. So for this kid to come home and do this to me, guys, that, that was this part of the story that I loved. That seems like it was meant to happen. Like usually I don't really talk like that, but that feels like it was meant to be that way. For it to have gone that long, for it to have taken this long, so many pitchers, so many missed opportunities, for it to for it to be this one guy to on some random day just knock it out and make history. So it just feels it feels right. And I made the comment that it, it sucks because it didn't happen at Petco, but it did happen in our second home at Globe Life. You know, that's where <laughs> that's where Slam Diego was created. Now we have the no hitter there. We should just play most of our we, we should play more games in Texas. Yeah, I mean, I I think the Texas fans would start liking us because we win games, not the Rangers. <laughs> well, you know what was really also cool? Um, we received Heath over the weekend. Um, Alex and Brown, I'm sure you guys saw this. We received a lot of tweets from great friends that were down there and they were taking pictures inside the ballpark going, yo, we're here, we're in the house. And there seemed to be a lot of Padre fans. I'm not exactly sure why everybody went there. Maybe because San Diego to Dallas is a quick, easy flight. Maybe it's because tickets are more readily available because they're letting everybody in. Uh, maybe Alex, to your point, maybe that's, you know, the fans really know that's where Slam Diego was created. I don't know, man. Well, yeah, Heath, sure was why rocking, went there. Heath was rocking the Slam Diego shirt there. I saw the picture. Yeah, I, I was there. Um, I, I really think it's because, you know, the stadium was open to everybody. I think that was the reason it was easier getting tickets and maybe um, San Diego. They're just kind of, hey, let's just go on a little trip. Let's go on mm -hmm. a weekend trip. Let's go see our boys play where we don't have to have a million restrictions and then um, kind of just take a big breath. I was, I was looking at the stadium like. Uh, it was, it was a beautiful stadium. It really, it was really nice. Um, it was just like last year during the playoffs, but this year everything was open. Um, so everything was really clean and, and, um, uh, shiny and it just, it was, it was a beautiful ballpark. You know, it's one of those ballparks that I kind of wish I would like to be able to play and get on the field because <laughs> it just looks so nice as a fan that I could just only imagine what it's like for the players. All of this conversation. My 14-year-old daughter, who needs a computer charger, walks in. You may have saw her sneak behind me, and she's going to pull my computer charger out of my computer. I'm like, you can't take my charger right now. We're in the middle of a show. I need every ounce of power. I don't care if I'm at 100% or I'm at 99. You can't take my power. Did Why not, Dad? Why not? I know, dude. It's, it's just it never ends, dude. It never ends. <laughs> Kids always um, take everything from us. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> it's so oh, they even make you send the outfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Heath Bell, the former Padre all-star closer with us today. He was in Dallas uh, or Fort Worth yesterday to see the Padres play in person. He was watching the uh, no hitter on Friday night from his son's high school baseball game. After the game already ended sitting there watching on a phone, didn't leave. So very, very tuned in. Um, Heath, we got 30 seconds. What is the top of that shirt? Dadalorian. What is that all about? You know, the Mandalorian. Yeah. My, my, my 11 year old loves Star Wars and stuff. And I saw a shirt that said Dadalorian. So, you know, I got to wear that so I can be cool like him. The Mandalorian. Yeah. Understood. Hey, you know, this is the way. <laughs> this is the way if Scott doesn't get that. He doesn't watch. I, I, I know Dude. that line, but I don't know the show. I don't know the show at all. Uh, Heath, it is great to be with you. Thank you very much. Hey, 10 seconds. How'd your son's team do Friday night? Oh, they won. They're actually in second place right now. They threw a one hitter. You're, you're muted. Yeah, they threw one hit. They threw one hitter and they won nine to zero. I know it is great to be with you so much love. Thanks Heath. All right. Bye-bye.